Welcome back to the program. I am Pius Kojo Baka. The Minister of Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujinapo, has disclosed that government's intention um, to review the value added tax component of the tax buildup on the cost of operation. Now, he noted that the move is expected to reduce the tax burden on the exploration of natural minerals and make it more attractive to increase foreign direct investments in the sector. He spoke at the opening of the 2024 West African Mining and Power Conference and Exhibition. Here is more. The 2024 West African Mining and Power Conference and Exhibition, Wampok Wampex, a three-day conference and exhibition, is expected to bring together strategic private and public industry stakeholders to deliberate on sustainable investments for the mining and power industry in West Africa. The conference will host technical workshops and extended B2B networking opportunities for over 80 exhibitors from 16 countries. With the conference dwelling heavily on sustainable Sustainable investments for the sector, Minister for Lands and Natural Resources Samuel Abujinapo disclosed the ministry's intention to review the value added tax component on the cost of exploration. We are, for example, working with the Ghana Revenue Authority and the Ghana Chamber of Mines under the guidance of government's economic management team to explore the best framework for treating critical inputs such as value added tax VAT on exploration. If properly structured, it will reduce the financial burden on exploration companies, making it more attractive to invest in exploration while safeguarding the nation's interests. On the issue of refining the country's raw materials, the Member of Parliament for Damongo stated that a legislative instrument which will ban the import of raw bauxite and other minerals is being worked on. We are also in the process of enacting legislative instrument, pursuant to section 28 of the Ghana Integrated Aluminium Development Corporation Act 2018, Act 976, to restrict the export of bauxite in this raw form. The president of the Ghana Chamber of Mines and vice president of external affairs, Goldfields West Africa, Michael Akafia, stressed the need for sustainable mining practices. Adopt responsible and innovative practices to enhance not just our productivity, but also promote environmental stewardship, social responsibility, and for our people, more importantly, community development. We have no choice but to embrace sustainable principles and practices as we navigate the complexities of our industry. On his part, the special guest of honor and representative of the Asante Hine, Odeneho Ochre Kusi in Trauma, Esumeja Mai Hine and Asante Mai Benkum Hine called for increased local content participation in the industry. Through the chamber, we've been able to make sure that most of the materials required to work in the mining industry are locally sourced. Yeah. And especially when we get into the mining operations services area, I'm so glad that tailings dams have been added to the categories of works yes. that uh, are left for locals. We need the money. Bring it. Engage us. Partner us. And we should be able to drive some of these things on your behalf. The 2024 West African Mining and Power Conference and Exhibition, Wampok Wampex, was held on the theme, The Mining and Power Hub, Driving Sustainable Investment Opportunities in West Africa. And we want to engage the thoughts of Gilbert Yerinchiado, who is the Manager Tax and Regulatory at Deloitte Ghana. He joins us via Zoom for some discussion on the back of this. Thanks so much, Gilbert, and good to see you. Now, you heard the Sector Minister talk about government's intention to review the value-added tax component on the tax build-up on the cause of exploration. Um, would you say this is a prudent decision? Thank you very much, and good evening to your, your cherished um, audience. I think that uh, before we even get to the point of saying, is it a good decision, we need to do a comparative analysis of uh, the investment trend in Africa. And if you see the data, you realize that um, we have almost about six top most African countries uh, that are leading uh, the forefront in terms of investment in the exploration sector in Africa. Key amongst them is Ivory Coast, Burkina Faso, Mali, Ghana, Guinea, and Tanzania. Ghana hitherto, um, I mean, was pegged at the third position and they have dropped to the fourth position. 
So clearly, you will see that there is a call or a need to look at the parameters that has triggered such um, a, a move from a third position to a fourth position. What are the key issues? What must we do to make us very competitive? And I think that that is why the minister is saying that, look, one of the key things that they may have identified based on their comparative analysis is the VAT component that is on the cost that um, entities that are engaged in the exploration se uh, 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 sector are incurring, which is a disincentive for the kind of activity they do. Let's bear in mind that at the state of exploration, what basically happens is that you are just incurring cost. Mm. You are just incurring cost. So the VAT is a top up of the cost because you are benefiting from services that are that are being rendered to you as an entity. And per the VAT principle, VAT is borne by the consumer of the service. So you will be charged VAT, and that becomes more of a cost to you at that point. And because there is no output, it still then becomes your cost, because the principle is that you incur, you charge, then you recoup. Mm. But that is the basic, basic principle surrounding VAT, holding all things constant. I mean, looking at how our VAT uh, mechanism is done in Ghana, that's why I said holding all things constant, because there are other variables you may have to consider. But if you look at it literally, then at that point, you have no output in order to make a recovery. You are just building up your cost. But because you possibly see a light at the end of the tunnel, that is why you are engaging in that exploration. So in order to ensure that you are doing further investment if there is the need for government to look at some of the components of the cost that can be taken off which will um, help encourage investment in that particular uh, sector i think that it will be a step in the right direction except to say that um in as much as you seek to do that you need to do the cost benefit analysis in terms of revenue generation i believe that uh, by listening to the minister, he has indicated that they did that. In, they are doing that in consultation with the Ghana Revenue Authority and other stakeholders. So all these things will be looked at in order to come up with what a comprehensive uh, decision that would help in ensuring that investment is encouraged uh, in that particular uh, sector. And it's very important because um, currently Ivory Coast is at the top with almost over one one. 105 million US dollar in terms of investment. I think that if you have this in your economy, it helps also eases the pressure uh, that we have on our currency issues in the country. So it is something that will be a step in a step a step in the right order if uh, proper measures are put in place, proper and critical assessments are done in order to ensure that all parties are not shortchanged at the end of the day. Having enumerated the literature of what really um, is at stake for us and what a view, indeed, there, are, there is a need for us to put in proper measures and, of course, uh, steps to be taken to ensure that we see the feasibility of this. And I want you to highlight some of the measures and the steps we need to take. One, I did indicate that we need to ensure that we do a proper revenue generation analysis. Don't forget that VAT is one of the tax uh, revenue source for government. So you need to do a proper analysis to ensure that, look, when we do this, in terms of revenue generation for tax purposes, have we created a gap? If a gap has been created, what are the remedial measures that government intends to take to ensure that that is also, in a way, managed or mitigated mm. so it's very important All right. also we need to look at the laws and other regulatory issues surrounding some of these things so that in the end we are seeking to ensure investor confidence let's look at what these other countries are doing uh, possibly we are only focusing on VAT but there may be other things that they are doing in order to garner such an investment um, to, 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 to be done in their jurisdiction. It is important that we do that comparative studies in order to ensure that whatever decision we take in order to show up the investment in this sector is done right and well. Thank you. All right. So quickly before you go, um, Gilbert, now aside the review of the VAT on the course of the exploration, which other aspect or area um, do you believe needs to be looked at in terms of getting the necessary capital from the sector? 
there is the need for them to do a detailed analysis of their cost structure. A detailed analysis of cost structure. Because, of course, if you read uh, what the minister said, they are looking at drilling another laboratory, um, at laboratory cost. Are there any other cost? Mm. Its emphasis is on the VAT. Are there any other costs that could be looked at? For now, I can't necessarily speak to each cost component because it's a highly regulated sector. But the key players in the industry would know some of these things I'm, I'm, I'm positing to. And if that is done well, I think that it will help Eric in the needed investment that is required for that sector to grow. And once that sector grows, I think that all other tax handles will be affected and it will also create the necessary employment um, um, for the country as a whole. Senior Manager Tax and Regulatory at Deloitte, Ghana, Gilbert Yerinchi Ado, we are indeed grateful for speaking to us on Business Thank Line. you. Thank you very much. Do have Let's a good move night. on to Bye -bye. some other stories. Executive Chairman of the Ghana Link Network, Dr. Nick J, has said that the introduction of the integrated customs and management system known as ICOMS platform has improved the efficiency of goods clearance processes at the port. However, it says that the depreciation of the city has contributed to the high cost of duties on imported goods. It's been speaking to Joy Business. The integrated customs management system platform has transformed customs processes in Ghana by integrating all stakeholders involved in the customs clearance processes. According to the executive chairman of Ghana Link Network, Dr. Nick Dansu AJ, the system has significantly enhanced the efficiency of port operations. Before, you can bring your goods and it takes you two weeks to clear. Now, Ghana Link, whenever you ship it from China, Everything is already in the system. So we can give you your, your final uh, declaration this thing for you to go and pay your duty before the container gets here. So most of the people that want to use it proper, they pay their duty before the container comes. So when the container comes, it will not take maybe a day for you to clear it. Dr. AJ also attributes the high cost of import charges at the ports to the depreciation of the Ghana city against the dollar. And customs determine the duties on the dollar, dollar rate. So uh, you will use dollar to buy, customer will use dollar to calculate your duty for you. So actually if the dollar is normal rate, it, you will get your this thing. But if it's raised, that's not me, it is customs that will use the dollar. If the dollar comes down, your duty also comes down. Integrated customs management system represents a major shift from the previous system where valuation and classification and risk management and payments were managed by different entities. You're still watching Business Life. We'll be right back with the Joy Business Fund. And finally, before we go, the Ghana Stock Exchange recorded four price gainers in May According to the summary of May 2024 market activities, the top price gainers for the month were New Gold, GCB Bank, MTN Ghana, and Total Energies. More in this report. The Ghana Stock Exchange Composite Index gained 1.81% in May to record a new all time high, bringing its year to date gain to 19.92%. The Ghana Stock Exchange Financial Stock Index also recorded a 0.41% increase, resulting in a year-to-date gain of 7.95%. Following at listing in May 2024, Atlantic Lithium added 2.85 billion cities to increase the value of all stocks listed on the market to 84.02 billion cities by the end of the month. The Ghana Stock Exchange's fixed income market saw traded volumes of 10.39 billion during May, double the volume traded in May 2023. Treasury bills accounted for 74.53% of volumes traded, whilst government bonds contributed 24.70%, with corporate bonds making up the remaining 0.77%. The value of all securities on the market stood at 328 billion cities at the end of the month. And that's it for the bulletin, but we've got more stories on myjoyonline.com forward slash business for you. Do visit the portal and get yourselves updated. I am Pius Kujo Baka. Let's connect same time tomorrow. Bye.